Ladies and gentlemen, check it out. I have a prototype BMW i8 and I have a racetrack and all I need is a driver to take this car on the racetrack and Nathan, you are not that driver I fear. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. We, it's a special car. We need a special Son driver. Uh, Andre, you are definitely not that driver. <laughs> no, not you. Go, 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 go. Ah, here is our man, Justin Wilson. Let me introduce you to our fans and our viewers. Justin is a current Indy car driver and you actually drove Formula One. How impressive is that? That yeah, Formula One car is a lot of fun, but uh, the Indy car is, is what I enjoy. It's, uh, it's a good atmosphere and some good people and racing here in the States, um, I really enjoy it. So let's take our race car driver, let's take our sports car, and let's take it on the IMI Motorsports Racetrack, and that is coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. Nathan and I were thrilled to have a race car driver, a current IndyCar race car driver at that, take on the TFL test track, especially since Nathan had just set the course record in a brand new Audi S4 at just over a minute and 10 seconds. We were both curious to see how a real pro could do. He beat Nathan's time? You'll have to wait, because first, Justin had to get used to the track. Justin is a current IndyCar driver, but he also has the unusual distinction of actually being the tallest ever Formula One car driver. So Justin is 6'4", and let's see how he fits in this car. Uh, That's your first test. It's like trying to get in a sports car. <laughs> Not bad. There we go. 6'4". Let's see if it moves back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got, got yeah. plenty of room. You good? Yeah. All right. Let's got, got more room than I'm used to. BMW has done something absolutely amazing. They've surprised everybody. I did not expect them to take the prototype and actually make it into a car that you can buy. I can't believe this vehicle. A lot of you out there have found that BMW has lost a step over the past 30 years in terms of design. Not now, baby. The lines on this vehicle are almost impossible. The fact that it is built the way it is built and the fact that it looks the way it looks, extraordinary. I can't find a bad line on this car, but more importantly, I don't know any car that looks like this and at the same time, they managed to keep it a BMW. Man, you know, it's like, it's out of a movie. It's out of a Tom Cruise movie, that's what it is. Oh yeah, he did drive one, didn't he? Let's take it for a slow lap and kind of just talk about uh, you so our fans and viewers get to know a little bit about you. So okay. obviously you're British. Yeah, yeah, from England and um, you know, been living in America now for the last seven, eight years and uh, racing indie cars. Racing indie cars and uh, yeah, I love it. It's a lot of fun, some good racing, some uh, tough battles. Serious racing, but fun at the same time. So that's right. what we like. All right, start it up, man. Let's go for a kind of introductory lap on uh, on the track. So okay. this is all standard BMW. So you just put it into drive. There you go, and then you want to probably slide it into sport mode. And what that does is it turns on both. Um, go left. There you go. Oh, oh you got you got. Oh, win. You're not starting. There you go. <laughs> reinvented <laughs> the way that these uh, gear shift levers work and um, I'm not sure they made it better if I'm being honest <laughs> yeah it took a little bit of getting used to that trying to just work things out um, I like some of the technology I like the heads-up display yeah and the round the surround view is also excellent especially yeah. if you're backing up in the crowded parking lot and you've got a hundred and thirty six thousand dollar <laughs> sports car that you don't want to ding up yeah all right so under the hood we have a we have a, uh, um, 
Well, we have an electric motor about the size of a basketball. Fortunately, the hood does not open, but the electric motor does put out 129 horsepower and 184 pound-foot of torque. It is mated to a two-speed transmission, which is somewhat unusual because Tesla, a long time ago, tried to put a two-speed in their Roadster, and they just couldn't figure it out, but BMW has done so. How's the seating position? It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah I, I can get all the way back. I can adjust the, the backrest. I'm comfortable. My legs are not hitting the dash, which is usual. Um, down here on the front where my shins are. So it's nice. I've got clearance. Now, you were telling me that when you used to race for Minardi, right? They actually had to build the car around you. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little tide in that car. Um, we had to... Uh, where my heels sit, they took half an inch out of the floor and lowered my heels uh -huh. that half an inch. Yep. And what that did is allowed my knees to drop down and get them clear from the uh, what we call the dashboard bulkhead <laughs> and uh, allowed me to fit in the car. Otherwise, it was just too tight. I couldn't move. So get right up on Nathan's butt there so we get some uh, video. And uh, we are here at IMI Motorsports, which is a very tight track, uh, obviously. But in some ways, it's kind of a miniature version of a real racetrack, right? Yeah. But yeah. It, it does give you a sense for what the car's capable of. All right, so back here, where you normally have the hatchback, you have hidden a 1.5 liter twin scroll turbo, basically the same engine that's in the new Mini, except this one's juiced to 228 horsepower and 236 pound-foot of torque. But the interesting number is when the two power plants are combined, and that is 356 horsepower and 420 pound-foot of torque. And that is a serious number that's going to take on this track. Yeah, it's, um, it's a good flowing track, so it works well with cars, even though it is slow speed. You can really get a feel for what's going on. and and how the car changed direction. The steering's very responsive. Um, you know, you got the acceleration, you can feel the torque from, uh, from those two motors working there and, and giving you that push out the corner, even for a relatively low power sports car, but um, it's got everything you need. Now folks, the entire vehicle is built around a carbon fiber tub. In fact, you can even see the carbon fiber right there. Aren't these cool? And look at this. These components here, well, they're built out of the same material that a front or rear bumper would be made out of, so they're very easy to replace. Yeah, it's seamless how they integrate basically a six-speed with a two-speed, and yet at the same time, you know, there's all this technology going on underneath, Yeah, and you don't have a sense for that. It just, it's just seamless. That's kind of what the cool part is. I don't know. I found the steering to be a little bit, of, a little bit on the numb side. You know, uh, it, it seems a little over-boosted, over-dampened, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's more modern the way they've done it um, to, to add extra power steering and dampen it down a little bit so you get less feel and it seems a lot of things are going that way but uh, you're exactly right yeah well it's because of uh, basically uh, MPGs right yeah if you get rid of the, the pumps that usually power the steering and make it drive by wire then it's lighter and it's more fuel efficient make it electric and uh, yeah and you can you can dial in what pretty much whatever you want right so you yeah. can you can you can change how much uh, the wheel steer based on how fast you're going but it does to purist at least BMW per purist take away some of that traditional BMW magic starting to kick in and and you can turn that off by the way so if you want to give it a shot there we go 
the AC off. Okay, so all off. Yeah, now, now we're all off. Now it's okay. all you, man. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> For a vehicle that cost over $136,000, there are a lot of impressive goodies that you get. It's actually a very reasonable price considering all the tech, but on the interior, there's some fantastic things, including a special upgrade when it comes to interior goodies. And it is part of the World Domination Package. Or do you Mega like- Mega World. Mega World. Mega World package. Now here's the cool part about it. It's over $10,800 and you get really cool things like blue seat belts, special seats, special surrounds, special color on the brake calipers. Whew, that's a lot of money for a small detail. Here's the good news though. The interior is still BMW chic. It's not out of place, let's say in the 7 Series, but at the same time they did put in rear seats which are almost completely unusable for anybody over the height of three feet. This is kind of the most interesting part of the track right here. When you come up over this hill, it gives you a little bit of... Uh, car goes steer. light. Yeah, car gets light. And then you land and you're turning yeah. straight away. Yeah, it's interesting. That's what we call that. You know what you can call that? The mini corkscrew. Yeah. <laughs> we got their first a name. A little bit of elevation change. <laughs> Does Nathan fit? Nathan, you don't fit. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Yeah, fantastic base track. Very demanding. It's also very tight. But just the right amount of tightness. Yeah. You're very smooth. There you go, a little understeer there. Huh? A little push. Yeah. yeah. The cool thing about this car is you can really hear that wastegate when it pops. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot too. I do like the sound. Yeah. Uh, it's, like I say, it's pumped in here, but it sounds good. All right, you got a you got a good sense for it. I think so. I right, think let's, let's do a hot lap. So okay. we're gonna go over there. We're gonna go keep going. I'll show you where we started from. And keep in mind, one ten. No pressure. One ten. Yeah. Huh? One ten. Yeah. That's pretty quick. That is pretty quick. Okay, let's stop right here on this line. Back, a little bit of push. Oh, hard on the power, give me the power. Yeah, there we go. Oh, push again, push again, that's the batteries. All that weight at the front. Gotta go in a little easier. Let the car turn. It's nice when you get it to rotate a little. Down into this tight section. Hit the compression. There's the power, there's the power. We're going power on. Last corner. We go long straight. Exit shot, exit shot. There we go. <laughs> 106. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, we officially suck. <laughs> well, you guys knew you know, how many times you complain, say, ah, I got a real driver. We have a real driver, and the proof is in the pudding. In a hybrid, he absolutely destroyed us at 106. Actually, it was 0.98, but you know, so basically, yeah, I'm a minute six. In other that's words, his first try. In other words, he's great, we suck. <laughs> You have to open the door because the window, yeah. Uh, 106, dude. 106. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, nice. You demolished the track record. <laughs> Not bad for an electric car. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I mean, I think it. it um it's not a Porsche 911. You're not hanging the back out on the throttle everywhere, but you're not, um, you don't have that GTR punch out the corner. But for an electric car to cruise around town, go around you know the, the city, and it'll go when you want it to go. It kind of covers all the bases. I, I'm impressed. A new age Grand Tour. Yeah, exactly. That's one way to look at it. And from the outside, it sounded really good. Did it sound good inside? Yeah, I mean, it, they pipe it in. They, 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 <laughs> they got that noise or the sound from the engine piped in here, you know, on the speakerphone. So it sounds really good. On the TFL scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, what do you give it, Nathan? I say sell your vital organs on eBay and find a way to buy it. And Justin, as a race car driver, as a race car, what do you give it? Well, I think it's very good. It's getting uh, close to uh, the power and the weight, uh, but I would say lease it. Really? Wouldn't that be cool if you could actually lease race cars? I'm going to give it a buy it. As always, this is Nathan. And I'm Justin. Saying thanks for watching and check out TFLcar.com for more news, views, and real world reviews. Ciao.